Hello friends and welcome to Classroom Teaching. In our last lecture, in our last video, we have seen about the gravitation, concept of gravitation and we all know that the, all the planets, they revolve around the sun due to the force of gravity. In this lecture, in this video, we are going to see about the motion of the planet that is nothing but planetary motion. Friends, many astron astronomers had been studying, had been observing the motion of the planet and the position of the planet. Up to the year 1609, that means before the discovery of first telescope, all the observations were made by naked eyes. But since the 16th century, a lot of observation, a lot of data were available about the planetary motion and about the position of the planet. Kepler, he studied that data and he found that the planets they revolve around the sun but while revolving they follow certain rules and these rules these are termed as Kepler's laws Kepler put forth his laws there are three Kepler laws about the planetary motion and in this video we, we are going to discuss about these three laws of Kepler Kepler's law One by one we are going to see about the Kepler's law of planetary motion. The first law, the statement of the first law is very easy, very simple. You can see in this video that the orbit of the planet is an ellipse with sun at one of its foci. So before Kepler, the if we see the model of universe, then according to the Copernicus, we know that according to him, the sun is in the center of the universe and all the planets they revolve around it in a circular orbit. But Kepler firstly told, he told that the planets they revolve around the sun in elliptical orbit. That means the orbit of the planet is an ellipse with sun at one of its foci. So let us discuss what is ellipse. Friends, what is ellipse? We know the circle. See? Suppose this is a circle. And if I apply force on it by two sides, that means if I apply pressure on it, then it becomes flat. So this flattened circle, it is nothing but ellipse. Look, I have a ball in my hand. If I apply pressure on it, then definitely the shape of this ball it changes and it becomes elliptical so the orbit of the planet according to Kepler it is elliptical and according to him the sun is present at one of the foci so what is meant by foci foci is the plural form of focus so what is focus of an ellipse Suppose this is the elliptical orbit. Each and every ellipse, it has two foci, two focal points. So how it is uh, how it is understood? Let us understand it. There are suppose A and B. These are the two points present here. The distance, the sum of the distances of the foci from any point, from every point on the surface, it is always equal. The sum of the distances, suppose this is F1 focus, this is F2 focus. What is the meaning of sum of the distances? A F1, it is the distance of F1 from A and A F2, it is the 
distance of F2 from A. So the sum of these two focus that is A of 1 plus A of 2 is always equal to B F1 plus B F2. So what is B F1? B F1 it is the distance here between B and focus F1 and B F2 it is the distance between B and focus F2. So meaning of that is if A F1 plus A F2 is equal to B F1 plus B F2. I will ask a small question to you. If I say AF1 plus AF2 equal to BF1 plus BF2 is equal to CF1 plus CF2, then what, what you understand from that? We definitely understood that C point must be on this surface, anywhere on this surface, either here C must be there or here or here or here. So the sum of the distances from of the foci from any point on the circle, on any point on the surface, it is always equal. So according to Kepler's first law, so this is nothing but Kepler's first law. I will repeat the statement of the Kepler's first law. What is that? The orbit of a planet is an ellipse with sun at one of its foci. So let us go towards the second law, Kepler's second law. According to Kepler's second law, the line joining sun and the planet it sweeps equal area in equal interval of time. So this is the statement. Let us discuss about it. Suppose this is the elliptical orbit of any planet. Why should we take any planet? Suppose it is the elliptical orbit of Earth. Sun, it is at one of the foci. Okay. So line joining sun and that planet this is the line joining the sun and the planet it sweeps equal area in equal interval of time so suppose we take earth it requires 365 days to complete one revolution if we take one month period so earth is going in this direction so in one month it goes Suppose this is position A, let us consider it is position A and in after one month earth it rotates and it comes up to this position. Suppose this is B position. So the line joining the sun and the planet it sweeps equal area. How much area is covered by this planet? So this much area is covered. So suppose earth is present here now, it is position C, the line joining earth that means the planet and the sun, it sweeps, it goes ahead in one month. So suppose in one month the earth reaches here, so suppose this is the point D. So how much distance is covered? This much distance is covered by the planet from C to D. We know from this figure only we can see or we can understand that the earth, the velocity or the speed of earth, it is slower here. It covers small distance here, whereas it covers larger distance here. In case of distance, if we say, then definitely the speed changes. But according to second law, the area which is covered, it must be same. That means the area, this much area is covered in one month. This much area is covered in one month. So, according to Kepler's second law, 
एरिया ए एस बी इट मस्ट बी इक्वल टू एरिया सी एस डी अगेन वेरी स्मॉल क्वेश्चन इफ आई से इफ आई से सपोज दिस इज पॉइंट डी ई फ्रॉम ई द अर्थ मूव अप टू दिस पॉइंट एफ इन वन मंथ सो वी कैन इजिली से दैट एरिया ए एस बी इज इक्वल टू एरिया सी एस डी इज इक्वल टू एरिया ई एस एफ or if it is given if these areas are equal it is given then definitely from this we can say that the time which is required to cover this much area or time which is required to go from point e to f to that planet it must be one month only so this is nothing but the kepler second law of planetary motion once again see the statement of that the line joining the planet and sun it sweeps equal area in equal interval of time so this is kepler's second law of planetary motion so from kepler's first law we understood that planets orbit is elliptical instead of circular from kepler's second law we can understand or we can see that the speed of the planet it is very less or it is very slow moving whenever it is far from the sun or its speed increases that means it very fast it moves it moves very fast whenever it is closer to the sun so now let us see kepler's third law it is also the law of planetary motion third law of planetary motion and this law it is about the distance of the planet from the sun and the time it is required to complete one revolution so time period and distance the relation between these two is given because one thing you must understand that i am saying sun is present here earth is moving in this orbit elliptical orbit but such many planets they are revolving around it and for each planet the sun it is at the focus so this planet and this planet they are revolving in their orbit but the time which is required to complete one revolution or the speed of the planet it depends on the distance of the planet from the sun and it is given by kepler's third law so let us see the statement first what is the statement of kepler's third law it is given by simple formula T square, it is directly proportional to R cube. So what is Q? T? T is the period of revolution. So the square of the period of revolution of the planet around the sun is directly proportional to the R cube. So what is R cube? R means R is the mean distance of the planet from the sun. It is not the exact distance but it is mean distance why it is mean distance because whenever the planet it revolves around the sun its distance from the sun it changes continuously sometimes it is very close to sun sometimes it is very far from sun and therefore r it is nothing but the mean distance so t square is directly proportional to r cube so 
द पीरियड ऑफ इट्स इट्स मीन्स द पीरियड ऑफ प्लानिट्स रिवोल्यूशन एंड द स्क्वेयर ऑफ द पीरियड ऑफ द प्लानिट्स रिवोल्यूशन इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द क्यूब ऑफ द मीन डिस्टेंस ऑफ द सन फ्रॉम दैट प्लानिट सो इट इज नथिंग बट केपलर्स थर्ड लॉ ऑफ प्लैनेटरी मोशन सो दीज आर वेरी सिंपल लॉज थ्री लॉज ऑफ केपलर दीज आर वेरी सिंपल लॉज इन फर्स्ट लॉ वॉट इज द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ फर्स्ट लॉ द प्लानेट द ऑर्बिट ऑफ द प्लानेट इट इज इलिप्टिकल एंड सन इज एट वन ऑफ द फोसाइड अकॉर्डिंग टू सेकेंड वॉट इज द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ सेकेंड प्लानेट सेकेंड लॉ ऑफ मोशन दैट द लाइन ज्वाइनिंग द सन एंड द प्लानेट इट स्विप्स इक्वल एरिया इन इक्वल इंटरवल ऑफ टाइम एंड द थर्ड इज द स्क्वेयर ऑफ द पीरियड ऑफ इट्स पीरियड ऑफ रिवोल्यूशन इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू क्यूब ऑफ द डिस्टेंस विच डिस्टेंस मीन डिस्टेंस ऑफ द प्लानेट फ्रॉम द सन सो this is these are the three laws of kepler and these three laws are based on mere observation and kepler could not explain he could not give the reason why the planets they follow these laws or why the planets they follow these rules so thank you for watching this video and in next video we will discuss about newton's universal law of gravitation thank you